Right then, so here we are at the Fairy Village Woods. We've had one go around as well. I just thought I oh, might as well do a video. If there's anything worth talking about, then it can be talked about. It's fine. Not sure if there is really. Um, yeah, not an awful lot happening today. Pretty quiet day. Hi. Oh, the people that took uh, Lucky down, they want me to take her back now. So it's like, okay. So Mickey, I've got Mickey back. He's added to the pack. Now Lucky down's coming back, but Lucky down could still be rehomed. I'm not sure what to do with regards to that. So she'll be probably coming back next week. Again, she could stay. She could get rehomed. I'm not sure. I mean, staying, there'll be, there'll be some positives. Certainly her and Kovi would have fun together. I right, sisters and all, so, yeah. <laughs> I'd probably be lovely for COVID to have a sister back. I think she would enjoy that, yeah. Come here, Riley. This way. Kobe. Cove, Coves. Cove, Coves. Come back. Yeah, I think that'd be a cool thing if she can have that, but, uh, hi. We'll see. Well, she'll at least be back for a few days. If not for good. Well, wait a minute. Time with her. Don't know. Don't know. Time with her. Yep, indeed. My Amber's pups are doing well, all late. They're, they're feeling well. Come, Coves. Covey. Covey. Come on. Come on, Bubs. So, as you'll notice, I haven't got the usual equipment with me to do the videos, as in the uh, microphone and the talkie stick. Whatever it's called. Um, you know what I mean. Yeah. The selfie stick. That's what it's called. Yeah, selfie stick. Yeah. I haven't got any of that. It's in the car. I just figured, well, oh, okay. See if there's anything worth discussing. There was that issue about um, locking down. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I did the video the other day. Well, I did a few videos the other day. There was a few other things that popped up. And what now? Oh, there was one point. I did the video the other day about. Um, Parents who have to pay for bad children. Bad parents have to pay for bad children. Well, one thing that is also an issue um, that I've not really spoke about in the past, sort of have, sort of haven't. Um, bad ministers will also have to pay. Well, as in, right, they have to repent of their misleading of the flock. They will have to. Acknowledge that as sin, because it is sin. You know, as a minister, you are supposed to be led by God. You are supposed to be led and guided by God, where basically God is speaking through you. And if you're not doing that, but you're sort of acting as if you are a minister of God, well, then you're a liar. And what you're bringing to the church is more demonic than it is godly. Yeah, I mean, again... Just because you're bringing scripture, it doesn't mean it's godly. Put it this way, the devil knows the scripture just as well as, well, better than any Christian. Better than, he was there for it all. You know, he experienced a whole lot. He was there. We weren't, he was. He not only knows what it says, but he also knows what it's supposed to say. Yeah, because he was there. So he can quote scripture just as well as you can, just as well as God can. He can give you scriptures and give you some understanding of what the scripture may mean, but it'd be a twisted understanding. Yeah, a watered down, lukewarm understanding. There you go, lukewarm. There you go. Brings us right back to the church, doesn't it, really? Lukewarm. There you go. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. Such ministers will have to repent. We'll have to acknowledge their part in the downfall of the church. Yep. That's what I said. I mean, in principle, there's a lot of people that are seriously deluded right now. But they believe that there's some sort of revival. They'll be part of it. But they're the people that got us into the mess we're in right now. Chances are they're not going to be part of the solution, are they, really? as they've been part of the problem for the past 20, 30 years. So how can they be part of the solution? 
they have had 20, 30 years to be part of the solution, but they won't. Yeah? Oh, put it this way, I mean, there are people that have been around for 20, 30 years, you know, praying and seeking God for revival and just you know, sort of trusting in God during all this time. Now, you can certainly say for those people, yeah, you could be part of the solution if you weren't part of the problem. But the thing of it is, is that most likely, if you've been a Christian for that amount of time, and you've not been speaking out against all this stuff, then you have been part of the problem. Yeah, because it's like something that was pointed out in law a number of years ago, that uh, if you knew that people were going to commit a crime and you said nothing, you were basically as guilty as those people. You, you'd be charged along with them after they committed the crime because you knew and you said nothing. There's an awful lot of people in the church and have been in the church who've known that it's going wrong, badly wrong. That the people leading it are leading it wrong, badly wrong. And yet they've, they've shut up and they've sat down and they've just said nothing because... As I said before, we want to be liked. We want people to like us. We want people to be friendly with us. We don't want people to sort of not invite us to stuff, you know. So we don't want to be someone who's constantly speaking out against what's going on. We don't want to be doing that, do we? But what if we're called to do that? What if that's what God is calling us to do? Should we be doing that? Yeah, of course, yeah. Sorry about the video, that went a bit wonky. I've got to try and pay attention to what, what the screen is aiming at. It's loose. There you go. A little covey. Covey, covey, covey. Love you, love you, love you. Oh, she's a sweetheart, this covey. She, she's got a lot more cuddly now. Every single time after I sleep now, she wants to jump up on my bed. If I'm on there, she wants to jump up and have a cuddle. Have a little bit of lovey's time. In which time she so absolutely sh showers me with kisses. And she has a little cuddle. Then she goes and lays basically at the bottom of the bed. And I have a little play with her. You know, pretending to uh, chase her with my fingers. and She tries to bite my fingers and I wrestle with her a bit on the bed. And... I. <laughs> A bit of play we have now. All right, all good fun. All good fun. All right, it's a little thing we do now every every single time, and she loves it. All right, she's doing well. There's the baby's bum. Kobe, you're showing you're coming your bum again, little lady. Hey, what a view that is, eh? What a view that is, eh, Copes? Kobe, leave it now. Walk away. Is it a stick? Probably a stick, okay. If it's a stick, you can have it. Oh, you never know what it is. She's got something in her mouth. You never know what it is she's got in her mouth. Oh, dear. Well, and also, as I said before, with regards to um, Christianity, I think I have said this before, we're in both the best time and the worst time ever. Well, it is quite remarkable, really. The best time and the worst time. Yeah, never had it quite like this before. With mean, the best time and the worst time. It's like, cool. <laughs> well, best time because of the fact you look at the technology that we've got now, you look at the way that people can, you know, as I say, travel so quickly. And even technology, you can be speaking to. Two billion, two million people, yeah, you know, on a live chat. I mean, some people with their YouTube channels do that. They do live chats and they're speaking to one or two million people who are watching around the world. So you can certainly do that as a church. Oi. Indeed, yes. So there you go. 
This one isn't it? Indeed, yes. Well, I say that's that's the best of times. The worst of times is when you see how all of that is actually being used, and you see that uh, you see what depravity is on the internet and all the temptations that are there. That certainly that sort of thing is far worse than it's ever been before. Far worse. Yeah, the temptations and yeah, even gluttony is worse because yeah, if some food is so cheap. Yeah, the fattening food is designed to be cheap to try and get people to eat that stuff. So yeah, there are elements within society that want people to be obese. Yeah, that's a true point. Anyway, we've got someone coming here, so I leave you to it. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. Right then, folks, here we are. I'm in that walk and talk. Hi. I suppose the subject matter for now would be, um, we're not perfect. Kobe, leave it now. Walk away. Walk away, Kobe. Well, because we've got Amber, Amber's head's down again. Kobe. Right. Head up, Amber. Head up, Amber. Stop eating rubbish. Right, this episode <laughs> will be on perfection, or lack of, is more the point. Perfection or lack of, there you go. Okay, well the point of it is, is that none of us are perfect. And none of us will be perfect until we are with the Lord. That could be the episode over then. <laughs> well, the reason for that is, well, there's a number of reasons for that. We are still in this world because we're in this world. Temptations of this world are going to get to us every now and again at least, if not term on a regular basis. Kobe, this way. Come on. Come on. Now, um, another reason is because what's the thing about people? People do like to be full of pride and not be so humble at times, especially when they're doing well. So if you were perfect, whom would you be giving the glory to? God or yourself? You'd be claiming the glory for yourself, wouldn't you? Because if you were perfect, it would mean that actually, yeah, every success in ministry would be down to you. Because why? Because you're perfect. Right? Kobe, come. Molly, come. Molly, will you hurry up? Come, bud. That's the thing. And that's why, you know, people are not perfect. That's why people won't be perfect until they meet with the Lord. Um, put it this way. It's not that God doesn't want us to be perfect. I mean, another point is the devil is going to continuously try to drag you down if you're doing well. So... So you have that as a point that, yeah, when the devil's trying to drag you down, it means that, yep, you're going to get hit left, right and centre and you're going to react sometimes in ways that you shouldn't. That's the reality. And that means you're not perfect. And it's going to happen all the time. You are going to have thoughts that aren't right and you're going to accept them and you're going to play with them. And, you know, yeah, you're going to lose your temper sometimes. You're going to overreact to things sometimes. One second. You're going to move. He's moving now. Come on, Mickey. This way. Come, Bubs. Come on, you're not. Over there. This way. Come on. Over here. Come on. Over here. What are you doing over there? No idea. Well, yeah, put it this way. The point about being a Christian isn't about being, isn't about being perfect. No. No, it's about learning, really. Being better. Yeah. Well, it's about, yeah, learning, really. Yeah. Walking the right way, I suppose, yeah. 
It's not about perfection, no, because you can't do that. Um, it's not about trying to be perfect either. Yeah, because as I said the other day, yeah, you can't fight yourself. So, yeah. If you heard that one, you know, yeah. So, yeah. That's disappointing, isn't it, really? Well, it's like today. Okay, I'm going to talk about football for a second. Man United played Roma today. In the first half, United were terrible. Now, a lot of people were, were very anti Oli in the first half, right? Second half, so the first half, basically, United lost 2 1 in the first half. So if, if it ended in the first half, United would have lost 2 1. If the game had started in the second half and ended at the end of the second half, United would have won 4 0. 5 0, 5 0, 5 0, yeah. They scored five goals in the second half, didn't concede any. Now, the point of it is, a lot of people after the game, oh, Oli did a marvellous job in the half time. Excuse me, based on what? What did he do at half time, necessarily? What you saw, you saw players who are top quality players step up. That's what, that's what, that was the difference, really, in the second half to the first half. Those players really stepped up in the second half and played fantastically well. That was the difference. Yeah. That was the reality of it, wasn't it, really? That was the difference of between that half and half. Come mix this way. Now, as I say, that meant that those are the players who want to play at a higher level. Those are the players who want to do better and better and better and better and better. Yeah, a lot of the players don't seem to want to do better, do they really? Again, Fred was awful. Again. Chewie, come. Come, my boy. Well, that's the point. You know, I mean, when I was a kid, I used to have a teddy bear called Man Fred because I was a Man United supporter as a kid. So, yeah. Now we've got someone called Fred playing for United. It was terrible. <laughs> That's a, probably the teddy bear I had. Yeah, playing for United now. He's grown up. <laughs> and now he's a terrible player. My fault, really, isn't it? Yeah. When it comes down to it, yeah, it's my fault. <laughs> I didn't teach that Teddy bear how to play football better. <sighs> but as I say, it's players like him and McTominay and Lindelof and Maguire. Even Wan Pazaka. Yeah, Wan Pazaka has been at the club for, yeah, it's now coming towards the end of his second season. His defending is still okay. Yeah, his tackling is very, very good, top draw. But his technical with regards to you know, tactical knowledge and all that sort of stuff, all that side of stuff, he's awful. And then you've got his crossing. His technique at crossing is most of the time absolutely terrible. You know, the opposition basically knows that with him, they can just let him have the ball because they're not afraid he's going to do anything with it. Now, in the end, I would associate these players with the way the church has been, you know, Christianity-wise, the way the church has been, where they don't really care about doing things God's way. Yeah. I mean, basically, you equate that to a footballer, it'd be like somebody wanting to be the best in the world. And the problem is, yeah, wan doesn't care about that necessarily. Certainly doesn't seem to, because he's not got better. He doesn't seem to practice that much. He was crossing because his technique is still terrible. Yeah, that's something he should have been practicing since being a youth. You know, he certainly has worked on his technique with regards to tackling. Yeah, very, very good. But, um, you yeah. know, the rest of his game just needs so much work. And he's just not really, he doesn't seem to want to do it because he doesn't do it. You know, to me, if you're a club like Manchester United, 
Right over the past 20 years, if you're a club like Liverpool, then you look at players like Keegan, Dalglish, Rush, Owen, Fowler, Gerrard. Look at players like that. You don't look at the mundane players and see, well, how did they get to where they got to? You look at the best and say, how did they get to where they got to? Yeah, I want to be like that. I want to come to this club and I want to be like that. I want to be the absolute best I can be. Yeah, that's what players should be saying when they come to a club. They should be looking at the best. Yeah, like the forwards. Rashford is always someone that has irked a lot of people. Yeah, Rashford... Yeah, Rashford wasn't there, I don't think so, when Ronaldo was there. Right? But he would have watched the videos of, of Ronaldo. He would have watched the videos of Ronaldo play, training and stuff like that. Because I imagine they'd be available to the youth. And certainly if he wanted them, he could have got them. Come on, you three. On you come. Come on, this way. Yeah, and yet, um, yeah, Rashford. No. Again, his technique lets him down so often. He just seems to turn off. Yeah. And so, as I say, you, you see that. Now, so therefore, the game today, was it Ollie suddenly at half time? realizing if you just do this 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 and this that's going to work right something you should have realized before the game because roma didn't play any, any differently to the way they normally play everything about roma was already known so how comes if he's a manager he says he's not a coach harry says he's not a coach i don't know because he was a coach at united initially wasn't he But um, no, he doesn't see himself as a coach. He sees himself as a player manager. Well, okay. Meaning what exactly? A football manager or a player manager? Because a player manager is basically... Um, what would that be, a player manager? That would be basically a motivator, wouldn't it? That would be... Um, Ah, oh, what do they call those people? What do, you, what do they call those people? They have them in big companies where, you know, if there's a problem with the company, you go and see them. And they're the ones who sort out the personnel problems, you know. Um, but basically, that's what Ori, I think that's what he is. He's someone who can talk to players and understand them and sort of try and get the best out of them in that way. But with regards to football, I don't think he has a clue. I don't think he has a clue. I don't think he does. So, no, I mean, I don't, I, yeah, I don't, I don't say that, yeah, that, that was down to him. I mean, Cavalli was brilliant. Um, with the Greenwood goal, that pass by Cavalli was absolutely fantastic. That was absolutely sublime. And, you know, the goal where, you know, Pogba passed the ball through to Cavani, he passed the ball to Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes slid it through to, or chipped it through to Cavani, and he half volleyed it into the back of the net. Fantastic. Again, from those three players, absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's those three players, because Pogba scored, Bruno scored in open play, and again, I think it was ball through by Cavani, wasn't it, to Bruno? Did Bruno at the score? Yeah, I think Pogba was involved in that as well. Yeah. Cavani was involved in the penalty that Bruno scored. And get the penalty, even though I don't think it was a penalty. No, I think that was incredibly soft. I think that was just basically two players coming together. I don't think it was a penalty. No. Nope. So, yeah. In the end, yeah, it is what it is. Amber, head up. Head up, Bubs. Where's Kobe? Kobe, come.
Come, Baba Girl. Don't know if she's got a collar. I can see her better now. Here you go, Cove Cove. I saw you. I saw you, Bubs. You won't get lost in the dark now, will you, Bubs, eh? No, you got a good collar now, haven't you, Bubs, eh? Here you go, Cove Coves. Love you, Baba Girl. So, yeah, with regards to that game tonight, I don't think there's anything to do with Ollie. I really don't. I think it's just those players. Well, I mean, they are top draw players, really. I mean, Pogba has won the World Cup. Cavani is, yeah, a top draw player. One second, we've got a mixie over there. Come, Mickey, this way. Come on. Don't go over there, bubs. Serve us, baby boy. Come here, Amber. Amber. Here. Amber. Head up. She's been a bit naughty. But yeah, as I say, and then say Bruno. Since he's come to United, he's had moments when he's been really good. But again, you've got to have Bruno and Pogba starting. You really got to. You've got to get rid of Fred and McTom because it doesn't work. Yeah, the second goal by Roma. Fred was supposed to be watching for that man running. He just let the man run behind him. Yeah, completely blind to the game. And again, you know, Scholes himself said, Fred offers nothing going forward. He's supposed to spot that sort of run and stop it. And yet he, he doesn't. So what's the point of him then? Yeah, it's very, very true. What on earth is that man still doing at a club? It's insane. You know, he, he's not good enough in any way, shape or form. He's proving consistently that he's not good enough. So how he's still there, I don't know. It's bizarre to me. But there's a lot of things like that going on. I mean, part of it is, is that, yeah, he was given a big contract, and because he was given a big contract, it means that, well, they can't exactly get rid of him, can they? I mean, because who's going who's gonna to be able to afford his wages? Now, that's the thing with Ed, Ed Woodward. He was just given contracts out like candy, wasn't he? Yeah, really high-wage contracts. Yeah, trying to tempt people, but giving them massive ones. You OK, too? Did you fall down, my boy? Poor little chew. That's a big bottle full of drinkies! There you go, it's over there. I'm sure they'll figure it out. One of them will bring it back. Now Amber's over there somewhere, probably trying to eat something. I don't know what exactly. What's he got now? Ah, Mickey, no, no cans. Mickey, leave it now. Mickey, leave it now. Mickey, enough. No cans. No cans, Mick. Come here, Luce. Leave it. Leave it. Leave it. Out of the way. No, no cans. They can't have cans. Cans can be quite bad for their teeth. So it's like, no, no cans. Leave that alone. Bottles as well, isn't it? Jesus. Bottles and cans and that. Money here. No. We're here, bubs. Here. Put it out. There you go. Ah. <laughs> the noises are all about making the game a bit more enjoyable for them. <laughs> Whether it works, I do not know. I have no idea. You can ask them. See what they say. I think it's going to start to rain now, so I think we need to head back to the car. I think just one trip around we'll have to do. I can hear the rain. I can just start to feel it now. Come on, this way. Amber, come. Come on. Actually, there's nowhere to go under, really, for here. Some places you can go under something and you can wait until the rain has sort of dissipated. There is a bridge over there. 
back there, you can go underneath that where there were seven dogs. I'm not sure that's a good idea. They'd be in the river quite a bit, so not a good idea doing that. This is quite house stones. Ah, oh, they're house stones. Okay. Come on, oi, now, move. Come on. Come on. Come on, Ollie. Anyway, so yeah, that's the football. Yeah. Not sure if you can see the house stones, you might be able to. Yeah. Yes, so um Oh yeah, the people that um that had algae pup, they had an older dog that passed, didn't make you know, it was old. So died quite recently. They look they were looking for another pup but they didn't want to spend the money on getting a a puppy now because they're too expensive. So with um, Lockie coming back, I said she might be a possibility for them. I'm going to see how it goes with Kobe, Lockie and Kobe together. Because if they play together and yeah, they're going to be good together, then fantastic. That that work beautifully well. Yeah, they can be together. Come on, Kobe. Now that work because you know she have a playmate. She's already got Mickey as a playmate, but Mickey had two sisters to play with. That would be brilliant. <laughs> I mean, I think Lockie would have to learn how to play because, you know, she's been with my house full of kids, not really playing like a dog with other dogs. So, um, you know, it would be useful for her to learn that. Um, but she can learn it. Hi. She'll take care of herself. She'll learn. That's it. It's just a case of... Okay, let's see. Let's see what the situation is going to be. I don't know. Come in, you. Let's do your collar as you're here. There you go. Come, Molly. Do your collar. Molly here. I'm here. Do your collar, Amber. Do your collar, Molly. Amber, would you stop getting in the way of that lead? Riley, here. Riley, here. You come on, mate. That's Kobe. Okay, Mickey, move here. Mickey, here, mate. You come on. It seems it's now going to stop hell snowing, but I uh, hate him, but yeah. It's died down now. Now I've turned the collars off. <laughs> okay. They get me in the car anyway. Yeah, indeed. You can see it on the car, you see the hell. There you go. Christy, 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 Christy! In you go. Come on. Chewy, move now. <coughs> right, there you go. You take care, God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Bye bye.